Hi, and welcome back to PR Tech Talk. In today's video, we are going to start STM32 development using a Mac and also running on Visual Studio Code. If you're on Windows, don't worry, you can tag along anyhow. The, everything in the Visual Studio Code are the same. Only the installation procedure is a bit different, and I have a special uh, video uh, for installation on a Windows machine as well. We'll start from a clean Mac, install all the required tools, and by the end of the video you will also have a blinking LED project on your board. ST nowadays recommend uh, Visual Studio Code as their primarily development platform for STM32. Cube IDE won't go anywhere, they are still supporting that one, but uh, I think that it's time to go some Visual Studio Code. So that is the reason for this series. You don't need any prior STM32 knowledge to tag along into this beginner series. I will take it very slow and res uh, keep my aim on the result and all the uh, potential problems that could occur, and we'll solve it together. So if you are ready, then I'm ready, so let's get started. I said I will take it step by step so it's easy to keep up and don't miss a step. We will first download Visual Studio Code and install it. Then I will create a profile in Visual Studio Code and explain why. Install a Visual STM32 Visual Studio Code plugin. Uh, download and install the STM32 Cube MX. And at last, download the CMake that we also need to get this configured co correctly. It can look a bit much, but this, this is a one-time installation and I promise it's easy. Then the fun begins. We will create the project in STM32 Cube MX. We will import it into Visual Studio Code, and we will build and download it into the nuclear board, and then see the success with a blinky LED. First we start by installing the Visual Studio Code. For to do this, we go to this website, and it's called codevisualstudio.com slash download. Uh, there you can download from Windows, for uh, Linux versions, and also for Mac OS. So we just hit that one. And it's going to download immediately to my download bin. When the download is done, it will take some time depending on your uh, internet speed. Uh, it's like 700 megabyte. You just pull that one and drag it into your application folder. After you have downloaded the Visual Studio Code and installed it, by dragging it to the application folders, you just launch it. And when you have launched it, I will do one thing that is not necessarily, but I think it's a very good thing to do. So I'm going to use profiles. So if you go down here to the cogged wheel, you see there is a place called managed, and then you have the profiles there. There you can see that you can have several profiles and we are going to create a new profile. And there is where I'm going to name that one STM32. And we create it. So now I have two profiles here. I have the default and that is active and I have STM32. And it, to make it active, we just hit that one there. So now it's STM32, it's active. And it also says down here in the cogwheel, a small ST indicating that this is the profile that we are using currently. So why do I do that? Well, I use several microcontrollers and if I, for instance, use ST uh, microcontrollers, I have their development environment and settings and stuff. And then I maybe install uh, my uh, NXPs or a microchip or anything else. And then all is on the same page and get clogged. And uh, that could be uh, st stuff that I, I need to uh, do for one microcontroller that is not suited for the next one. So then I could have different profile for different manufacturers. It's not necessary. And if you only keep to one profile or one microcontroller, you don't need to do it. But I, I prefer to do it. And this is how you do it. So it's an easy step. So the next step is to install the uh, extensions. So we go here under this uh, extensions 
and we write in the search bar STM32 and we find there are several but this this is the one that we are looking for the STM32 cube ID for Visual Studio Code and we just hit install uh, and it asks then do you want to trust yes we would like to trust that one then this one installs a lot of plugins for us it's a package of 15 different uh, stuff, uh, 15 different plugins that it installs for us. And it's ready when you can see uninstall, then you know it's, it's already done. Hi, sorry to interrupt. If you're not a subscriber yet, please consider to do so, it's highly appreciated. Give me a like if you have seen this video and give some comments what you would like to see in the coming videos in this beginner series. Now back to the video. Next step is to install the STM32 Cube MX. And to do that, you need to go to the st.com's website and search for STM32 Cube MX. And you need to have a login, you, otherwise, you can't download it. And I have logged in, so it says Hi Peter there. So we can just scroll down here and we will find the Get Software section. There are several uh, softwares that you can choose from. Uh, you have Linux, you have Mac, you have Mac, and you have Windows. And for Mac, it's crucial that you know what the microcontroller or what processor you have in, in your uh, uh, laptop or in computer. I'm running a bit older uh, MacBook Pro, so I'm running with an Intel chipset. If you're running with a newer one, with a Mac M, M125 or something like that, then you get that one, that version instead. But I need to go with this one, so I just hit uh, to get the latest. And we then need to hit the accept button. And we need to allow collections from downloads from ST and it will get down into our uh, downloaded folder. So here in my downloaded folder I have this setup uh, file and it's a packed set file so I double click on it and it will expand for me and then I get the setup unpacked And it says welcome to the installation. So we just hit next. We need to hit accept. And we have read, of course, we have read. And then it just points out the path to the application where it will be placed. So hit next. And then we're done. So we can just hit next and done again. To download CMake, it's very straightforward. You just go to cmake.org and you hit the download folder for the download button. And then you, as previously also, you have different versions. You have Linux, Windows, and then you have the Mac OS. And I have the latest version of Mac OS, so I hit that one. And that will end up in our downloaded folder. So there it is in the downloader folder. We just double click on that one. It says just drag it into the application folder. Okay, so we do that. Uh, now we need to start the Visual Studio code. Okay, and so now we can see we still have the profile ST there and that is fine. What we now need is to tell Visual Studio code that we have installed the uh, scene making where it is. So we go under this setting path there and then we have the settings. So then this settings tab will open for us and what we can search for here is the path for CMake. And we can see that the, the current path is CMake and that, that is not correct. So we need to change that one. So this is the default path that CMake installs itself. So we can just pay, paste that in one. And then we can hit uh, close. Right, so now all uh, dependencies and all installations are done. And now we're going to take it for a test drive. 
And to do this, we are going to use the STM32CubeMX. So we hit the, the launch STM32CubeMX here and hope that it will start. So the STM32CubeMX launched nicely and I know what board I'm going to use. So I click on Access Board Selector and I get this page and then I write Nucleo C031. And you get it here. Before we now put it uh, to the next step, you have the documents and resources and data sheets and stuff up here. So uh, don't be afraid to use these informations if you would like to see the schematics and stuff. It's, it's all available for you there. But we just start the project. And they have now a feature that it can generate demonstration code for us. And on the board, there are one user LED, the LD4, and it's a green one. There is a user button that is the blue one. And there is a black button as well, but that is a reset button and not used in more than to reset the device. And there is also a virtual COM port that can print out uh, communication to the UART to you. So we just hit OK. So what you need to do is to hit the project manager and you need to give it the project name. And you also need to take notice on where you have your product uh, project location. Uh, I have it there. And then it's a very crucial thing. This toolchain IDE, it sends default on EVARM and that won't work. So you need to change it to CMake. Otherwise it won't work. So that is the change you need to do. So what you need now is to hit the generate the code and it will set up the complete project for us. So it's completely successfully generated. So we can just close it and we can also close the STM32CubeMX. Next step is to bring in the project into Visual Studio Code. So we hit this one and we open folder. And that is the folder there I put my uh, project in. And I think I named it Visual Studio Code Blinky One. And then we need to say, yes, I trust the authors because it's myself. Then we need to wait a bit and then we also get a uh, configuration or a uh, notice if there is any issues with the CMake because then you will get a notice down here that it's uh, it can't find the CMake or something like that. But so far it says, would you like to configure the discovered CMake project as an STM32 cube project? And it says yes there. So it creates it for us. So here we have the development board that I choose, the Nucleo C031. And I will just then connect my USB port. And as soon as I connected it, it says it found it. What we now need to do is to set up the project for us. So we hit the set up the STM32 cube projects. And then we see what board it defined, it found out itself it was a Nucleus C031 C6 board. And it is the GNU GCC compiler there, the tool chain. So we just hit configure. And we hit debug profile. So now that is done, now we can try to build the project. And the first time in every project you do, you need to create a JSON launch file. So we hit that one. And it then asks us for what debugger we want to use. And I would like to use the STLink GDB server that is on board on this board. And it, then it creates the file for us automatically. And so we can just close it and then save. So now we have that done.
So now that we have done that, we can build the project. And it built with exit code zero, so it was completed there. Then it downloaded the project to the file, to the board. And it stopped on the HAL in it. Now we let's see if we can hit the run button. So we have new buttons up here. These are the debug buttons. So there you have the continue F5. So now the project is running. So whenever I then hit the user button, you can see that the small LED toggles for each time. And we can then just stop the project. And we can exit out of the project altogether. Now we have uh, come to the end for this video. The first video in the series, I hope, for beginners uh, uh, and Visual Studio Code. Please give me some comments in the chat below. If, if you managed to do all the steps and if you had any problems, what problems you had, so we can all learn and share from it. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider to do so as well. And give me a little thumbs up, it's really appreciated. To see in the next video, you need to just hit the bell so you get notified when that is happening. Hope to see you in the next video. Stay safe. Bye.